So for this thing, we need to do a few things. We okay, on to the next problem. So this is what the mirror cell is going to mount into, and it needs to be able to rotate so that it can point at various points in the sky. It needs to change in attitude, and then it also needs to be able to rotate once it's at a particular attitude. That's what this large bearing is going to do. So I need to let that in there. Let me just hold that there for a sec. And then that sits in there. And so this piece can rot uh, rotate to change the attitude of the tube. And then this whole piece here will sit on a base and it can spin around the base and put some bearings underneath this and uh, and it spins around. So you basically have a, um, a, uh, a bottom plate on this so that you can affix a pivot in the center so that that thing can pivot about a center. I'll probably, well, I don't know what I'm going to use for bearings yet. But anyways, the problem is I need to let these create a, um, I need to cut a, a semicircular sector out of here so that this can mount onto the bearing. And similarly, I need to cut a semicircular sector out of here so that this can have some bearing surface to sit on. Now, it doesn't need to be much. Just, um, just a, a few inches is fine, but still the rest of it has to get out of the way. And this bearing is too large to fit into the CNC. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to put a carrier on it first so that it is square. And then I can do my lets for the mirror holder into either side. And then I'll also be able to use a center point to round out the outside edge. Now. That's maybe a little too thick. I might trim that down. I don't know what I was thinking in terms of thickness, but no. in any event, I'm going to do some sketching on the CAD to see if I can figure out how to carve out a nice little let into some wood. So yeah, that's the next step. So I um, just uh, attached a, a carrier to the bottom of the bearings and drilled a hole in the center. And now what I'm going to do is just route the outside edge of the bearings. So to make life easier, I've put down a couple of pieces of um, slippy tape on the, um, on the surface. So I was making a switch between FreeCAD and Fusion 360. And in FreeCAD, you define circles by using a radius. And in Fusion 360, you define circles by using the diameter. And that was the result of my mistake. looks like a square corner which is which is nice pretty pretty square corner so I mean that's the way I drew it so hopefully it would come out pretty square um, so that means the machine is relatively square I think it is um, reasonable to slap in my piece of, of stock and let it have at it. Once again, I need to put a center into, uh, a center mark into here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I've got this centered on this, um, this square. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark the center of here, put a 1 8 inch hole in the center of this board. Then I will come over, find 
pretty much zero, well, halfway between these two axes, and then uh, mount my, my stock roughly underneath that zero point. And then I will drop the, uh, the um, tool down so that it just nestles into the, um, the hole, the one-eighth inch hole that I've drilled. And then that will set my X and Y um, zero points. And then I will bring the, uh, the tool up um, and register it against a known thickness above the bottom. Well, actually, I don't have to get that, that fancy. Eyeballing it is fine because these are just lets. Um, so um, then um, bring it up 49 millimeters because that's the thickness of the material. And then that will be my Z equals zero point and then let her rip. So yeah, should be pretty straightforward. Okay, that should do it. Okay, so that's centered. Now um, I just need to clamp the workpiece down. Um, and to do that, I'm just gonna throw some screws into here and screw it right onto the, uh, onto the bottom plate. I mean, what the heck? I mean, it ain't called a spoil board because it's gonna stay pretty forever. Okay, so I'm at Z equals zero. I haven't moved X and Y axes. Reset this because, well, I think there must be a, there must be a way of setting zero from the um, main menu, but um, I'll, I'll figure that out later. For now, let's, uh, let's see what we get. Oh, <clears throat> I should mention that um, I made other adjustments to the program. Um, it was only taking um, 10 microns per revolution. So I'm pretty sure I can load that <laughs> bit a bit heavier than that, even in wood. So uh, so yeah, I, I increased the, um, the feeds and speeds a little bit, and we'll see how that goes. Good grief. Okay, so I did not do a good enough job checking to make sure I had clearance as far as I needed to get clearance. But the good news is um, I can mark my registration by clamping this. I can move this back down um, because I've got plenty of room on this side. I can move, I will, um, I'll clamp a, um, a straight edge along here. I will move this down a couple of inches. I'll restart. All that means is that it'll recut this and this, but since there's no material to remove, that's fine. It'll just go through the motions and, um, it'll pick up in here where it left off as long as everything registers properly oh there's so much to learn with this thing god So it's cutting rhomboids, rhombuses, in the XY plane because there is probably what is I, I'll measure that. But these sides are uh, trued up here against those two edges. So that edge and that edge is trued to the square, but there is a definite gap on that side. But it meets the cutting 
line here, so I am that much out of square. Okay, so it's time to cut some new blanks for the uh, mistake that I made after not being uh, having my machine trued up after it running into uh, end stop problems. But I've got it nicely squared up again, so I can cut a new blank and then try and do some more um, routing of the uh, of the way of the let for the bearing. And that is the result. <clears throat> a much cleaner cert, well, yeah, except for the fact that that tool is um, done with. I really should have changed the uh, the tool before starting this cut. Um, and uh, it shows in in the uh, in the quality of the surface. But um, in any event, um, now. We've got that cut done. Um, looks like it makes reasonable passes. That's as that's as much as I was expecting out of the um, out of the contour in terms of surface finish because I'm going to have to sand everything anyways. And uh, and yeah, it's uh, it's a start. So I have a problem though with registration. I didn't carefully um, align the disc into the center of the board um, so uh, I, then I marked the center of the board as the center of the work and I tried to get it centered but I mean these are these pieces are not exactly um, these pieces aren't exactly completely uniform either so there's lots of play in there so that I think is accounting for part of that registration error, but I'm going to do some measurement just to figure out whether or not that is what's going on, see if it's um, cutting square, um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's that trial cut. Yeah, I so messed up on getting the center. I mean, that is a radius over here where it... Uh, took out the uh, the edge part this <laughs> is the <laughs> radius over here where it just barely took out the edge part you can see here and that's the radius there and then this is the radius here where it barely took out the, the edge part so you can see how much shorter that is than the opposite side. <laughs> like, oh man. Yeah, that's terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Anyways, I just have to be more careful about finding center of the workpiece. And I think I am good to go for doing um, the next cuts. Okay, so I've got the back of the carrier board up. I just wanted to try this new um, path plan that I did on Fusion. Um, we have now got three millimeter depth of cuts for the hogging passes, and I think I brought it down from 700 or 800 down to 700 millimeters a minute. So we'll see um, what that does. Um, now that does mean that the chip load is at the very tip of the of the um, of the bit. Um, I think ideally you're supposed to have more of the bit engaged, but we will see what that looks like.
Okay, so I think that's some reasonable fidelity on the um, on the edges. It doesn't seem to be overloading uh, the tool, um, not uh, damaging the wood with any tear out too badly. So, yeah, I think I'm going to get this reoriented, um, centered, and then let it let it run. So I've cobbled myself together a little bit of a story stick. The inside diameter of that, those rings is supposed to be f um, 400 millimeters. So I've got <clears throat> 199 and then a stop block. And then I'm going to run that up against the bit. And that, if I can get it centered so that this spins freely around the outside, I will have it centered because I'll have a radius, an equal radius in all directions. That's the theory anyways. You can just barely see it in there, but that needs to move to the left. Just about a millimeter. Okay, when I run this around, I have about a uniform gap all the way around. And so that means I'm pretty sort of snug there. Like maybe a half a mil there, half a mil there, half a mil there. So yeah, that's pretty centered right there. So I am going to clamp that down and we'll be ready to mill. Okay, so this time I clamped that once I had its position located. And then I actually used um, a countersink and drill to um, drill locator holes for the screws so that I didn't disturb this registration. And I'm going to check the registration one more time. Except I forgot to um, do a touch off on Z0. So I'll have to do that and then reset that. Okay, so that moves without scraping and let's get something under there to see just how close it is. So I can just barely slide a paper under there. So what is that? 20 microns? 30 microns? Okay, so I, I have not I just moved the z-axis at all. I've just turned the machine off, pushed it close to the center, um, and then now I have, when you turn on Marlin, I've got x, y, and z equals zero when it turns on. So now I'm just going to drop the z down so it's close to the bottom there and then um, adjust my x and y so that I have got it exactly, uh, well, as centered as I can, and then bring the z-axis back up to zero and then reset the machine and that will have um, x, y, and z zero centered in the plane of this top piece centered on these two concentric circles. Supposedly. I think it went just slightly too far. Okay, I'm happy with that. It's probably less than half a mil. So that, uh, what is that, 500 micron by hand? Okay, so the best to so the best of my hand fitting, I mean, I've gotten the tip of this tool, the center of the tip of this tool, centered over within these two concentric circles, and with the tip of the tool resting on the plane defined by the top surface of our work. So... That is um, where the origin is on the model, and so now let's just start up the mill and see what we got. Cool. 
Ooh, Aussie pie. Yum. Well, that's how it ended up, which actually didn't turn out too badly. I'm not quite 100% sure what this extra feature is on the uh, on the top surface, unless that was a pass that the 360 added to take a burr off the edge, but I just didn't register it to zero. Quite possible. But um, anyways, that one seems to have worked. It's pretty symmetrical from corner to corner, which I could which I'm reasonably happy with. There's, yeah, it's pretty symmetrical. I haven't quite gone and done the measurements on it, but in any event, that seems to have been a success finally. I think the fourth or fifth attempt with a couple of tests and then two failed attempts on an actual piece of material, but the um, MPCNC has produced its first useful part. And I guess that's got to be counted as a success. As always, thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye for now.